Only three people have ever had the distinction of both playing in the NFL and having been awarded a Rhodes Scholarship. Myron Roll is one of them. Yeah, for more than five years, he has worked in the neurosurgery department at Harvard Medical School and Massachusetts General Hospital. I recently sat down with CBS News special correspondent James Brown to discuss his journey from the gridiron to the operating room and his new book, The 2% Way, which is out now. You knew in the fifth grade, Dr. Myron Roll, that you wanted to be a neurosurgeon. You're kidding me. How in the world did that come about? The neurosurgery sort of came to my mind early before I even knew I wanted to play professional football. And, you know, now that concussions and traumatic brain injury is, is a huge part of the game, I can have a foot both in my scientific world as a physician in neurosurgery, healing brains, and then also a foot into the NFL and other contexts for us to talk about head safety and trauma and concussion protocols necessary to keep our, our kids and our young people safe as they play some of these sports. It's a profession and a specialty that you've chosen that is truly amazing. Do you get any encouragement from your colleagues as, say, you would on the football field? Absolutely, you do, and you have to, because, you know, medicine is very difficult. Neurosurgery is very difficult. You have losses, you have wins, you have challenging cases. You sometimes have to break some very sad news to patients and their families. It's very difficult to talk about these things, so you have to be able to bounce ideas and thoughts and feelings off of your colleagues. The Two Percent Way, a book that you've written. What is that, and how are you hoping to impact people with that philosophy? Well, the Two Percent Way is a is a mindset. It's a, it's an ideology. It's a way to think about approaching your large problems, right? Taking small steps, consistent steps towards a larger goal. I first learned about this by my football coach at Florida State. His name was Mickey Andrews, my defensive coordinator, coach all these great players, these defensive juggernauts. And he would always challenge us to get 2% better every practice. And then we'd go into the locker room after practice, and he put on the board, Byron Roll. Did he get 2% better, guys? I extrapolated that ideology and put it to life. You've um, done work overseas as well. I call it giving back or missionary work. We also know how taxing the medical profession has been in this pandemic environment. What's enabled you to weather the storm and to keep going forward? Well, yeah, certainly. Starting with the first, you know, I've, I've gone to Zambia, Sub-Saharan Africa, a very low-income country. I was there for about five months doing pediatric brain and spine surgeries on young kids who were uh, suffering from something called post-infectious hydrocephalus or neural tube defects, spina bifida. It's a it's an endemic in that area. It's young kids having pregnancies, infections in the soil, having non-sterile situations where children are being birthed. And so they have these infections, they have these loculations in their brain, their heads get really big, and they need some sort of cerebral spinal fluid re-diversion some sort of way, whether it be a shunt or an endoscopic third ventriculostomy. These surgeries that I was able to master and perfect over there, it gave me an opportunity to see how neurosurgery is done in a low resource setting and how I'm able to sort of meet the systemic gaps and challenges that these patients face. You have some patients who are coming three, four, five hours away, walking these distances to get to our hospital in Lusaka, Zambia. It was very difficult for them. So we did our best and it was an outstanding and sort of uplifting experience. And as for the pandemic, it was very difficult on many professions, but definitely the medical one. You know, when you're hearing people from the outside world saying COVID is not real, pandemic's not real, let's not get vaccinated. And then you're seeing people die in front of you because they come in with terrible respiration rates and they have all these issues happening and, and you know, expire very, very quickly. It's very difficult to sort of muster losses and deaths and tragedy over and over and over again. For me, I was able to uh, lean on people who supported me, lean on people who love me, to pour into me, speak good words, positive affirmations, take walks, exercise, get my mind away from these tragedies that we're facing in the hospital to sort of clear myself out. Look, this pandemic was tough, but we're tougher and we're going to get through it. And then when we get through it, we're going to be able to maintain and continue the, the, the lifestyle and the workflow that hospitals have to have uh, in order to keep people healthy and keep people safe in this country.